What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Dude Ranch DIY. My name is Jake. Today we are out here in the wood yard, but we are not going to be dealing even remotely with anything to do with firewood or logs or wood in general. Today we are dealing with something that is particularly out of season, I guess you could say, um, but I got a new piece of equipment or an attachment, I should say, for the tractor and I'm pretty excited to try it and being that it is today 70 and uh, March 14th, spring I'd say is right around the corner and with spring comes the infamous spring cleanup or property cleanup. You know, you got to walk around, pick up all the sticks, blow any leaves that blew out of the beds or out of the woods onto your lawn over the course of the winter, various things to do with the lawn. Um, and one of those big things that I have to do around here, because as you can see, we're just surrounded by woods, is we get a lot of sticks and leaves that blow out of the woods. And if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that I have a blower that goes on the back of my tractor. It's a gas powered blower. Uh, I, I got a new one actually this past fall. 13 horsepower and that thing works great. But you know what could work even better? I think this thing could work even better than a 13 horsepower blower that was adapted to fit on the back of a tractor because this thing was designed to go on the back of the tractor. And while 13 horsepower is pretty big for a leaf blower, I'd say that a 39 horsepower Kubota tractor is an even better power source to blow some leaves and debris off a lawn for a spring cleanup. Now this is a giant vac and through doing some research on the company, I actually found out that at one point they were based right here in Connecticut. If you're new to the channel, we're located in southwestern Connecticut um, and these guys were a little bit upstate for some time. Um, I don't think they're based out of there anymore, but uh, one of the implements that they make and I, I believe they still make are these PTO powered debris and leaf blowers. These things can commonly be found on like golf courses, schools, you know, universities, places that have a lot of area and a lot of leaves and debris to move. Um, so for that reason, I've been looking for one for a while just because I thought it would be a cool thing to have. In the fall, it would certainly make blowing all of the leaves that fall here in the wood yard a much easier task as well as all the leaves up at the house. So I'm gonna pull this thing out of here. This is uh, just directly where I unloaded it. Um, we got some stuff to do with it as far as fixing it up and getting it ready to use for the first time. Um, I got the new Baumalite little mini skid steer out here. So I got the forks. We're gonna pick this thing up, bring it up to the house and uh, go over a couple things. Surprise, that broke free pretty easy. This one, the head snapped off, so we're gonna have to try and get that one out once we get the plate off. Okay, inside the belly of the beast. Now, as you can see, everything rotates pretty freely. Um, you know what, these belts really don't even look <laughs> to be in all that bad a shape. They don't look like anything too special for belts and this thing spins really freely. It looks like we can pump some grease in there and we should be all set as long as 
this grease fitting isn't too gummed up, but it uh it doesn't appear to be. I mean it it's not like it was super rusty or anything, it was covered in grease. So I've been banging trying to get this uh, PTO shaft off, sprayed a bunch of PB blaster on there, but I just realized this thing was covered up in grease, but it looks like there's a set screw there, um, and that was hiding under a big glob of grease. So that might be the reason why this thing isn't coming off, because everything else on this machine appears to be pretty well greased. I mean, granted, this thing probably hasn't run in years, but whoever had this uh, was definitely, you know, taking care of it because everything has grease on it and nothing so far has been seized up except for this one self-tapping screw here. So that's not a big deal. We can grind that down, drill out the hole again. Oh, yeah. Easy peasy. Like I said, all this stuff seemed pretty grease. Now, let's see if the shaft will come off. Maybe now we can get a little movement going forwards. That's awesome. The main uh, main bearing took grease. Let's try these others. Three for three. All right, well, I'm happy to say we're four for four on grease fittings. Uh, we got this one down here. We got, let's see, this one up here. This one over here. And then, I don't know if you can see it, but down in there, there's one in the grease fitting is pointing down towards that far corner. And that accepted grease as well. I just went ahead and lubed up with some PB Blaster. This uh, joint here, there is no grease fitting on it, but this is what controls that flap on the inside to, you can hear it in there, which controls uh, the airflow direction. I'm not gonna go ahead and grease up these wheels because that one is bent and we need to bend it back and it's just gonna make it a mess, you know, when I go to take out those axles um, to and or the casters to put on the new wheels. The new wheels and PTO shaft should be here tomorrow. I am probably going to have to take this over to my buddy Chris's because unfortunately I don't have a torch and I think this puppy needs to get heated up in order to take it off. Um, now it is the style PTO shaft that just, you know, bolts on, um, but in me hitting it and banging it to try and loosen it up, it did loosen it up, but now I'm not able to get it quite far back enough to fit this bolt all the way through. As you can see, there's just a little bit more it has to go. I can pound it in with a hammer, but um, it messed up all the threads on there. I'm not sure if you can if you can see that right there. All those threads are all kind of messed up. Um, so we'll have to heat that up, get that off, clean up that shaft, grease it up good, and then put it back on. And then the new shaft that I got uh, the male or the female end should match up to this and we can slide them on and cut to the right length.
Man, do I love this truck. It sure makes loading stuff up like that pretty darn easy. Uh, this machine also picked it up absolutely no problem to uh, the height of the flatbed. Felt pretty stable, the machine. Uh, the thing itself was a little bit tippy on the forks, but it's kind of to be expected. I'm supposed to get a little rain in the overnight. That should do. All right, guys, just got home. We got some more goodies showing up. Hop down the tractor quick. There it is. Well, there goes the truck. And here we got ourselves a couple new little goodies for the Bommelite Mini Skid Steer. Any uh, guesses as to what that might be? All right, just got to Chris's. Here he is. He's got some fresh, brand new skid steer quick attach adapter plate on here oh yeah look at that just like a real new tractor brand new man over here oh yeah brand new never used never used we're going hot rod look with no hood but you've been working on the hood oh yeah he's been working on it so i'm giving him these forks to use uh for the time being might have another project down the road for him. We'll see. But uh, for now, he can use them more than I can. Let's see what you got. We go. Boom. All right, we're back the next day. I'm gonna try a little heat, coerce this puppy off. Well, I forgot to film, but we got it off using a uh, little redneck ingenuity and uh, some brute force. You probably surmise how we did that. And yeah, there's the keyway, there's the shaft. It's mighty hot, but uh, it's off. This wheel's pretty bent. Just trying to heat it up and bend it back so that this flap can uh, go up and down easier. This one's pretty bent too. All right, I don't know if you could tell on camera here, but this wheel was pretty bent in. Um, it was not flat at all. It was bent down this way. And now we got it to be just about right with the other one and level. And now this thing actually can close um it looks like uh, this had gotten hit with some rocks at some point or something too so we're gonna have to uh bang this out take the bolts out straighten that but it's much much better than it was all right we're back a couple days later from getting this pto shaft off over at chris's with the heat i gotta get this keyway out and uh i'm gonna try and clean up the shaft a little bit There we go. Go 
goes on easy up to there. And then you can see I'm like turning the whole shaft and it's not like I could bang it on but it won't just slide on. It's close. closer. I think we just got to take a little more off. All right. We are on. Granted, the keyway is not in. Turns out the keyway wasn't going down all the way because there's a bunch of crud in there. Now I just need to go get a new shear bolt because this one is all stripped off and to be honest I don't think this even is a real shear bolt. bolt. Um, while I'm at the hardware store I'm going to get new bolts for these holes. I'll probably drill out those holes a little bit larger um, and just put some real bolts through them for that piece over there. And uh, I think that should be about it for now. So I don't know, all these holes were drilled with just self-tapping screws. I think that's kind of dumb, um, more prone to like break. So I'm gonna drill all of them out to quarter inch, including this one that did break and uh, replace it with real hardware. Just got back from the hardware store. Got the new bolt that fits good. Beautiful, like butter. Now I just want to get these holes lined up. Nice. That goes in, no problem at all.
So I got the first tire on the wheel here. Well, I should correct myself. I didn't get it on. A gentleman at work that does a lot of the maintenance to the uh, municipality, uh, you know, lawnmowers and small motor equipment, um, showed me how to do this. And he gave me a couple pointers and tricks. So I'm going to reenact them here on the second tire. And uh, we'll see if we can get it. All right, we're almost there. There we go. Way, way easier than when I tried to do that off camera yesterday. All right, so we got both tires on the rims. However, I did just realize that this one is missing the valve stem. So I'm gonna have to run out and get a new valve stem and then we can get these puppies mounted up and uh, inflated with air. $3.34 later, we got some new valve stems here. Okay, that is in. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, one down. There it is. All right, we are almost there. I uh, just greased up these two and they took grease no problem. So now I think we are ready to put it down on its own wheels here for the first time in God knows how long. There we go. The final thing we have to do is cut the new PTO shaft that I got for that. This is the side that we need, the large side, so I guess that would be the female side. Um, we're going to have to cut that to length 
and made it up to the tractor. So we will continue that another day. Tonight, I am actually in a men's cornhole league with Chris and our other buddy Justin, Mr. Utility, if you followed along with the channel. And we are in the playoffs, and tonight is the first night of our adult cornhole league playoffs. Um, so I gotta go make dinner before Sarah gets home, play some cornhole, but we will be back in just a minute for you guys. All right, I got the PTO shaft here, or at least the new half that we're gonna use. I did a bunch of measuring outside, wasn't gonna bore you with that. But essentially, we have to cut off eight inches okay we uh, should be good to go just want to try this before I put the plastic shroud back on all right that looks to be about right back up the tractor and see how we do So we're in theory at the right distance, and uh, yeah, this is looking good. Try and make this up. Boom. There we go. All right, guys, so because this is a floating implement and I want to put it on my quick hitch, um, I have this adapter thing here. So in theory, this should just kind of go. Yep like that and you'll notice it's not locked in there which will allow the implement to kind of float on its tires back here
Well, all right, guys. I know there wasn't much on the lawn, so it wasn't much of a real test, but it blew pretty much everything that was on the lawn, off the lawn, including large sticks, you know, hydrangeas, leaves, rocks. Um, so this thing, I think, is going to prove to be quite an asset uh, come the fall time. I, uh, I kind of wish I got it closer to fall because now I'm going to be dying to play with it all summer long, but um, I'm sure it's time will come and it will come in huge handy. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know it's a little bit different than most of my other videos, uh, but I enjoy doing projects like this. You never know, you know, really what you're gonna get into. And uh, I have fun learning new stuff. This thing isn't totally 100% done. There's still a few more things I'd like to do to it, including probably slapping a coat of paint on it at some point, at least uh, down there where Chris and I hit it with some heat, um, burned off the paint, but I am very happy with this thing and uh, couldn't have gotten it for a better price. So I think that's pretty much gonna wrap it up on this here PTO driven leaf blower. So as always guys, if you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, consider hitting that subscribe button down below. It would help me out a great deal. Questions, comments, or feedback on the blower or uh, if you have one of these things and uh, you got any tips for me, throw it down in that comment section. But for now, I'm Jake, this is Dude Ranch DIY. Thanks so much for watching. See you here next time.